How's it going, people? I can't really complain. I wouldn't trade problems with anybody. I do have some, but, um, well, one of them is I have a house 90 miles away from my job. And I got an apartment in Sacramento, which is 90 miles from my house. And rent is getting too goddamn expensive, and I hate to drive 90 miles one way just to go to my job of 28 years. So, still thinking about this. Is it time to cut ties with Sacramento and find a job up here and stay in my paid-for house and stop paying for rent? The only problem is there's not a lot of jobs up here. There's my problem, and I wouldn't trade with anyone. I mean, I got a job, and they seem to want to keep me at it. So, uh, I haven't had a martini in a long time. It's been a real hot day today. I got four possibilities here. Amazing love, and I believe I got this from my uh, the church of my childhood. Is hell for real? Are you ready? I think it's about the corrupture. Uh, actual news. You know, and even have a rabbi sucking a little baby's foreskin off, and satanic Muslims or rabbis or something. You know, something to do with slavery, slave ships, or is that the Ark? I don't know. Well, one of these I'm going to delve into. And since they're all fantasy, this is one. One, two, three, four. Since it's fantasy, I'm going to break out my old D&D dice. Ooh, I used to take it seriously. Of course, I used to take religion seriously, too. Not so much anymore. Okay, I'm going to roll a four-sided dice. One, two, three, four. You can all see that I'm not messing around here. Two uh, is hell for real. It's like he's trying to tell me a message. Finally found a use for these D&D dice after 20 years. All right. <laughs> Some other time, maybe. Oh. And now that I'm rolling dice, I figure I'll shake some ice. Yeah, because that's so nice. It's been a long week, and I'm still thinking about my situations, and you're welcome to chime in. What, what would you do? have not read this in advance, I'm pretty sure of that, because I don't really enjoy reading these things. <laughs> but I found a way. Ah, shaken and not stirred, because I like those little bits of crunchy ice. It's like a gin and vermouth slushy. Okay. Is hell for real? And that was an honest roll of the dice. The dragon dice. Mmm, <sighs> hell of a martini. A little strong, I like it that way. Is hell for real? Yeah, they're repeating that title, so. Is hell for real? Um, the Bible says, Do not be afraid of those who kill the body. And after that, have no more that they, wait, and after that, have no more that they can do. But I will show you whom you should fear. Fear him. And the H is capitalized like in a, those early Fantastic Four issues where Adam Warlock was first called him because he ran out of names uh, for a while. Uh, him. Let's find out who him is. Fear him who, after he has killed, has power to cast 
into hell. Yes, I say to you, fear him. Luke 12, 4 and 5. So, there's some guy who could throw you into hell. Might be Trump. <sighs> this is really hard to read. Okay. Um, these verses... Versuses <laughs> make four points. It's like my four-pointed die. One, hell comes after death. Two, it is more to be feared than death. Because, you know, death is real and Hell comes after, so that's why we know it's real, too. Because somehow people with magic eyesight, you know, magic visions, and telling dreams know about what happens after beyond the veil of tears. Three, only God can put you there. I thought we put ourselves there. Depends on which argument or point they're trying to make. This time, only God can put you there. Interesting. Four, hell and the grave are not the same. I beg to differ there. I believe the translation of hell is often sheol, which also means a grave. Not to be confused with Haiti, which is a bad place you go to after you die, but in some other faith. Or to be confused with Muslim hell, where these people are probably going to be going, if they're right. I mean, the Muslims. And they're not. Okay. Jesus himself spoke these words. Then you should have printed it in red, cheapskate. And he never resorted to scare tactics. Yeah. Yeah, cult leaders aren't known for that. Ever. He spoke the truth. And the truth was scary. He described hell as a place of torment. Luke 16.23. Not scare tactics real. So I I guess they've already uh, answered that question in advance. Huh? <sighs> I'm sure they'll prove their point since they began with their conclusion and haven't strayed far from it. <sighs> These sheep are not known for their straying. Oh yeah. Yeah, Luke 16, 23. And a place of unquenchable fire along with torment shit <laughs> and that's mark 9 43 through 48 so you can just jump to that and act like you read the whole book just quote parts people will be impressed in matthew 25 41 the lord said depart from me you cursed into everlasting fire prepared for the devil. Notice the words, the everlasting fire. Okay, I will notice that. After this, I made enough for two, I think. Uh, or that was one potent one. <laughs> what is floating in my... I don't know what it is. But it sterilized whatever it was. I'll get back to hell. <sighs> I haven't had any all week. I keep it up keep it up here. That's another factor. I don't have any booze, I don't have any bud in the city in my apartment. It's up here. So, I don't know. I might turn into a booze hound 
drug addict if I move out of my apartment in Sacramento. I would swear all work week I'm a teetotaler. And most weekends I am too. Just saying. <sighs> Notice also that hell was originally prepared for the devil. I did notice that. Mm. Does anyone doubt that the devil will be severely punished? That must have been a rhetorical. They <laughs> weren't asking me. Of course I doubt. But I think, you know, I don't know, Hades, he's got to live down there in hell, doesn't he? Oh, wait, wrong, wrong religion. That's right. So that isn't real. Only this is. All right. Uh, we'll assume the answer is yes, because that's what they're assuming. Then, how can anyone doubt the reality and severity of hell? Wow, that was some checkmate with that logic there. Well, maybe after I finish this. Mm. Wow, that was a oh, that was one heck of an argument there. All right, and they're only halfway done. Um, hell is the place where the rebellious suffer under the wrath of a righteous God. It certainly will not be less severe than God describes it. Okay, those rebellious, huh? Funny, they didn't come up with a quote there. They just said that. But I'm sure it's in here somehow. Because they tried to control people. As long as there have been people, they've been trying to control people. And this shit used to work. Just like the boogeyman and Santa Claus. And the Tooth Fairy. And the devil, we're into a quote, a uh, quotation there, and the devil who deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone and will be tormented day and night forever and ever. Sounds real. Convincing as hell. And... They got have a lacuna here, so they skipped out. So there's some lacunies here I didn't mention. But anyway, yeah, dot, 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 and a section left out. And anyone not found written in the book of life will cast, will, was cast into the lake of fire, Revelation 20, 5, uh, 10 through 15. Yeah, so uh, let's see. The devil deceived who? Adam and Eve? Did you deceive Eve, really? <sighs> is it, I don't know. Read it again. First of all, the snake is just a snake that talks. It probably was eating the fruit of the tree of knowledge. Being a vegetarian, it was probably eating that tree. How's that? And he got real smart and learned to talk. Because it doesn't say that in Genesis that the snake is the devil. They don't even mention the devil in Genesis, or for quite a while. It was just a snake. That probably lived on the fruit of that talking tree, that magical tree. Why wouldn't it have magical speaking powers? But, deceiving. Well, let's see. He said you wouldn't die, and they didn't die. Well, eventually, I guess they did, but they might have still eventually, if they didn't eat that other magic tree in time. Anyway. It is impossible to do enough good works or to be good enough to go to heaven. No kidding. Huh. No kidding. Just sounds like someone's kidding. All right. <laughs> wow. No scare tactics. 
<sighs> you are lost in sin already. Just by... I mean, you get, like, door prizes when you come into this life. There's some sins. <laughs> now go and sin no more. And you're still not good enough. Yet. All right. Uh, and here comes a part of a quote. A little snippet. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Romans, at least part of Romans 3.23. If you were not lost, it would not have been necessary for God to give his only son to suffer and die for you. But uh, no scare tactics, maybe a guilt trip or two now, and some scare tactics. Mm, it's probably mostly ice by now, but I'll take it. Oh, almost nothing. Uh, suffer and die for you, damn you. The choice is yours. And I'm just trying to help out here. Mm. If you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you will be saved from hell. Because of, they've already proved their point, haven't they? Oh. Yeah, they, they really proved that, didn't they? Man, great job of dialectic there. I'm so persuaded with your apologetics. Mm. Or not. If you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you will be saved from hell. Acts 16.31 And also don't forget to quote the, the name of the, the wizard, Shazam! Because special shit happens. Let me say that word. That name. Yeah, magic. It's real. Why? Because God into a quote now, part of one. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him, and they're the same guys, so you don't have to get confused when, by who they mean when they say him. They became the same guy at that point, or something like that. I mean, three in one snake oil. <laughs> yeah, wow. Guess which verse that is. Uh, if you believe in the Son, capitalized, and know it's S-O-N, not S-U-N, because I would have got it right if it had been S-U-N. I do believe in the Son based upon my senses and perceptions. You will exp... Uh, wait. Wait. Uh... If you believe in the Son, you will have everlasting life in heaven. And you'll live happily forever. Happily ever after. That's it. Abracadabra and all that shit. However, if you do not believe the Son, you will experience the wrath of God if you don't love him. You bitch. Bastard? One of those things, maybe both, who knows? <sighs> and that's John again, 336. Then again, that could be John the Epistle. I'm not sure. It's one of the Johns. Go to the John, you'll find it.
<laughs> Won't you turn now from uh, from self? Wait, I'm going to read that from the beginning. Hang on. Won't you turn now from self? Self. You know, like individuality. Like being an individual. Instead of the Borg. <laughs> from self and sin and accept Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord, be saved from the terrible doom of hell. No scare tactics there. That awaits those who refuse God's wonderful plan of salvation. <laughs> it's wonderful. Line up and... But no tongues. Well, you can speak in tongues if you want. <sighs> Under the in the right occasion, you know, the right individual maybe. But I'm into individuality, so the self. I guess that is my sin, being myself. <sighs> Hell is real, but you will not have to spend. Eternity, wait, hell is real, but you do not have to spend eternity proving it. And that was in bold. God. <clears throat> Hang on, I can't read this print. Scriptures from the New King's James Version, copyright 1994, Thomas Nelson Incorporated by permission. Jesus people, I know those guys. They're pretty prolific. Uh, Jesus people, information center, information to be included. Wherever they put the info box until they delete that next. Anyway. They think hell is for real. I remain unconvinced. But I want to hear from you. If I changed your life, I changed your mind, opened your eyes, and you went... I mean, tell me what direction you went in. That'd be interesting. Anyway, I'll do those other ones eventually. I'll tell you what. You know what they are. Vote on them in the comment section. And I'll read that one next. Peace, the fuck, out, and have a wonderful, what the fuck it is you're having. And what do you think I should do with this crazy situation I'm in? A job of 28 years, been living in the city in an apartment that's in Sacramento, and they've lost their fucking minds and think they're San Francisco, and can just force you to have roommates, and I like to live alone. <sighs> See, I have a house up here, and I only have to share it with a cat, and I have only a couple of cool neighbors. Or I'm in the city where I might be robbed, and they want to make, make me pay for parking spaces, too. My rent is going up $70 in two months. Anyway, sorry, I didn't mean to be a Trump speech. Um, stay tuned, and chime in. Let me know what you think.